Welcome to Integration by Substitution. In this video, we will go further into our integration journey and we will start to integrate composite functions, something that's a little bit more challenging and a little bit more complex than the terms that we have previously integrated. So we want to recall the chain rule, which was how we took the derivative of a composite function. Recall that a composite function is one function inside another one. So if we had a composite function that looked like f of g of x, so we had an outs outside function and an inside function, and then we wanted to take the derivative of this with respect to x. So if we take the derivative with respect to x, what we get is we took the derivative of the outside function, left the inside function alone, so we got f prime of g of x. Then the chain rule said we had to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, so times g prime of x. That is our chain rule. Integration by substitution is a way that we can actually integrate this part right here. So we can see when we're taking the antiderivative or the integral of a composite function, something that looks just like this, the integral of f of g of x and then its derivative built in, g prime of x dx, is that original composite function that we started with, and of course plus c, because we have an indefinite integral without upper and lower limits of integration. We are also going to learn something called u substitution, which is a simpler, at least in my opinion, a simpler way to sort of make the integrand a simpler looking function. We call the g of x function, the inside function, u, and then we take its derivative du, and that's the g prime part. Then we get this fun looking thing, the integral of f of u du. It's much simpler looking. We do use a change of variables here, and in the end, we have to back substitute to get it back in terms of x from u. So we will take a look at doing it straight up today. This is a slightly more complex process. Then, halfway through the video, we will see how we use a very popular integration technique called u substitution. I do recommend that you write both of these down right here because we will be using them throughout this video. In our first example, we are going to utilize the first technique. So what we need to do is recognize in our integrand in here, what is our inside function and what's our outside function, and then what is the derivative of that inside function, g prime of x. Well, it looks like our outside function is something squared. That inside function, the thing that's being squared, g of x, is x squared plus 1. Then we know that because g prime of x is there. If g is x squared plus 1, then its derivative, 2x, is right here. So we've recognized the inside function, g of x, is x squared plus 1, and its derivative, g prime, is 2x. It is also inside the integrand here. Then our outside function, what the thing that's happening to g of x, is that it's being squared. So the way that we can write that is that our f of g of x is g of x being squared. Now, if we follow just the formula right here for what we need to do, we can see that we have this set up, and what it equals is the antiderivative of f with g of x inside untouched, and then plus c. So our f function is something squared. In order to find the antiderivative, called capital F, we need to use the power rule for integration. So something squared, if we integrate something squared, we now raise that something to the third power and then divide by 3. So we'll have 1 third and then something raised to the third power. Now what is that something? That something is our inside function g of x. g of x is x squared plus 1. So that is the thing that's getting cubed now and then we have plus c. Now, in order to check our work, so we found the answer, what we want to do is to check our work, we need to take the derivative. So let's take the derivative of this function right here and see if it gets back to this right here. Well, if we take the derivative of this function, we need to use the chain rule as we can see. Our outside function is something cubed. So using the power rule for differentiation, we bring that 3 out front, it multiplies by the 1 third and goes away. We then keep our inside function the same, and using the power rule still raise it to the second power, one less. Then using the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x. Then the next term is c, a constant, 
our derivative will be plus zero, so that goes away. So we checked our work and we did get back to our original integrand, which means that we found the antiderivative or the integral correctly. Now this process is a little complex, I think, looking at all of this, and like I said, in about one and a half more examples, we will take a look at how we can sort of streamline this process using u substitution. In this next example, we again see that we have a composite function. We have a 5 here out front. That's not really a part of it, but we do have a cosine of something, and that inside function is 5x. The outside function is cosine of something. So our outside function f will be the cosine of, and then our inside function g of x is 5x. We also know that g of x is 5x because g prime would just be 5, and we also have that right here. So then our f of g of x, where g of x is our inside function 5x, the f, the outside function, is the cosine of 5x. So 5x is our inside function. You could put parentheses around it if you'd like. Now, in order to find the integral of this composite function right here, we need to, again, follow just this formula over here, follow this rule. And that states we find the antiderivative of f. Well, our f function is the cosine of something. And if you take a look at the reference sheet, or if you recall, the antiderivative of cosine is sine of something. Now, that something is going to be our inside function g of x. So it's going to be the sine of our inside function g of x. So it's going to be the sine of 5x, and then of course plus c. So that should be our answer, but before we get too excited, let's check our work. We check our work by taking the derivative. The derivative of the sine of 5x is cosine of 5x, then using the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which would be 5, so we can also rewrite this as 5 cosine of 5x. And then, of course, plus c, the derivative of that goes away. So we did get it correct because that is our original integrand. And so that means we found the antiderivative correctly. In this next example here, we are going to do a different process called u substitution. We can still use the way that we've been doing, which is pattern recognition of f of g of x and g prime and uh, finding the antiderivative. However, the u substitution makes it a little bit simpler to sort of streamline that process. So we still want to identify what the inside function is. And in this case, this looks very similar to our first example. There's just not a 2x here. Um, our inside function looks like x squared plus 1, and that inside function is being squared. Now, we see that the inside function, x squared plus 1, would have a derivative of 2x. We don't see a 2 here, but we do see an x, the important part. The 2 is not as important because it is just a coefficient, and we can deal with numbers out front if we need to sort of cancel anything out to make it work. So let's write out, let's let u be this inside function here. So we're going to let u equal x squared plus 1. Then we need to take the derivative of u in a similar way that we had g and g prime. So du would be 2x dx. We need to have the dx here now because we are using a different variable, u. So the derivative of u is 2x times the derivative of x, which is dx. Now I change colors so I can color code here. Let's see what we have. We only have x dx. We do not have 2x dx. So what we're going to do instead is divide by 2. So we'll have 1 half du equals x dx, because we have x dx here. We can replace it now with 1 half du. And that's what I mean when we can sort of make things work with the numerical value, not the variable. But we can make things work with the numerical value. Because we were missing a 2, we sort of balance it out with a 1 half eventually. All right, so we have a u, and we have what 1 half du equals. We have everything taken care of inside here. This u is being squared. And then we have 1 half du right here. So let's replace this entire integral on this integrand with everything in terms of u. So we'll have an integral. And then this x squared plus 1 squared, that's u squared. So we'll have u squared. Then this x dx is going to be replaced by 1 half du. 
the one half, because it's a constant, or coefficient rather, can go out front, and then the du can go in here. So I have simply replaced everything with something in terms of u instead. Now this looks a lot simpler than what we had previously, and this is a lot simpler to take the antiderivative of. We have something squared. Well, that means we need to use the power rule for integration. So we'll have the one half out in front still. Then we add one and then also divide by that number. So we'll multiply by one third, and we also have u to the third, and then of course plus c. So we've taken the antiderivative using the power rule for integration. So what we really have is 1 sixth u cubed plus c. Now because our original problem was in terms of x and not u, we can't just answer it this way. We have to back substitute, and what that means is replace u with what it equals in terms of x. So u is x squared plus 1. So we will replace u with x squared plus 1 in parentheses because it's more than one term and it's being cubed. And of course, before we're completely sure and done with the problem, we do need to check our work using differentiation. So let's check by taking the derivative of what we believe our answer to be. So I'm going to bring the three out front and multiply it by 1 sixth, which gives us a half. Then I do not mess with this at all. I'm using the power rule for differentiation. Then using the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside would be 2x. And then of course plus c, its derivative is plus zero. One half times two x, the twos end up canceling. So we have x squared plus one quantity squared times x. This is our original integrand. And so therefore we did this correctly. So the u substitution is simply an alternate way to take the antiderivative of a composite function. This next problem is an awesome u substitution example as well. Let's take a look at what u should be. So it does take a while to sort of get better at, at what u should be. Normally u is the inside piece, it's the inside part of something. A lot of times it's a denominator, it's what's under a square root, it's what's in parentheses, it's what's inside the trig function, and in this case it's no different. What's sort of the inside function here is the 2x minus 1. The outside function is the square root of something. So we're going to let u equal 2x minus 1. And if stuff doesn't work out, then you just try again. All right, now next we need to find du, which is taking its derivative. So the derivative of u, du, is just 2 dx. Now let's see. We have the square root of u here, so this is accounted for in terms of u, but then we don't have a 2 dx, we just have a dx. So once again, we're going to actually divide by that 2, so we'll have 1 half du is just dx. Remember, our goal is to simply replace this entire integral, so its entire integrand, what's inside it, to go from x to u, because we're streamlining it and making it simpler to take a derivative. So what we have here is we have the square root of u. The square root of 2x minus 1 is the square root of u. Then, instead of dx, we need to have it in terms of u. So dx equals 1 half du. So once again, I'm actually going to bring that 1 half out in front, since it's a coefficient, and then we have du. So what we really have is the integral, rather 1 half, the integral of u to the 1 half du. Then this looks much simpler and we can use the power rule for integration to find the antiderivative. The power rule for integration recall says that we add 1 to our exponent and that's also the number we divide by. So adding 1 to this gives us 3 halves so we need to divide by 3 halves which means multiply by 2 thirds and then we'll have u to the 3 halves, and then of course plus c. Cleaning up, this gives us 1 third, and then I'm also going to back substitute. So again, our original problem is in terms of x, so we can't answer in terms of u, we have to back substitute and go back to the original variable. So we'll replace u with 2x minus 1, which is what we let it equal. 
and it's raised to the 3 halves, and then of course plus c. And of course, what's our final step? You go ahead and check, using differentiation, that this is in fact our answer. So using differentiation, we bring the 3 halves out in front to take the derivative using the power rule. Then 3 halves times 1 third cancels to 1 half. We leave our inside function b and then raise it to 1 less. Then using the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2. The 2 and what remained out here, the 1 half, cancel. So we're left with simply 2x minus 1 to the 1 half, which is the square root of 2x minus 1. Therefore, we did this problem correctly, and the antiderivative is right here. This next problem is really similar, but it's going to be done a little bit differently. That's the beauty of different integrals. We have an x multiplied by our square root of 2x minus 1. Now, once again, we are still going to let u equal 2x minus 1 because it's the inside function. It's underneath the square root. And then we'll see that du equals simply 2dx. Now, the problem here is that not everything is accounted for. We can replace this with the square root of u, or u to the 1 half. Um, we can replace dx with 1 half du. But we don't have a way to replace just x. So what we're going to do is rewrite this and solve for x in terms of u. So rearranging and solving for x will give us u plus 1 over 2, and that's what x equals, solving this for x. So now we can replace x with u plus 1 over 2. We can replace this with the square root of u, and we can replace dx with 1 half du. That means our entire integral has an integrand in terms of u instead of x. Let's rewrite it. All right, I started with just replacing x with what it equaled. Then I'm going to rewrite this as u to the 1 half here, the square root of u. Then dx gets replaced with 1 half du. So I'm going to rewrite, we'll do all these different colors. The 1 half can once again go out front, and then the du. Now, we do still need to sort of simplify this a little bit. What we can see right here is that we have a 1 half in, in this orange here. And so it's really u plus 1 and then times this 1 half. So I'm actually going to bring this 1 half also out in front. So we'll have a 1 half times this original 1 half out here. So we'll end up having a 1 fourth. So in our next line, what we have is a 1 fourth times the integral of u plus 1 times u to the 1 half, and then du. So next, I'm going to multiply and distribute this u to the 1 half through. So we'll have u to the first times u to the 1 half, which is u to the 3 halves. Then we'll have plus 1 times u to the 1 half. And this whole thing, du. Well now, this is pretty simple to take the integral of, or the antiderivative of, because we can use the power rule for integration for each one of these terms separately. Remember, when you are integrating or anti-differentiating different terms separated by a plus or minus, you deal with each term separately in a similar way of when we did it with differentiation. So we have a 1 fourth out in front. Then this u to the 3 halves will add 1, so we'll have 5 halves, and then we divide by that 5 halves, which means multiply by 2 fifths. So we'll have 2 fifths u to the 5 halves, plus in a similar way, we'll have 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. That's all multiplied by 1 fourth, and then of course our plus c. When we multiply through by that 1 fourth, we'll end up having um, 2 over 20, which is 1 tenth u to the 5 halves, plus 1 sixth u to the 3 halves, and then of course plus c. Now our last step, we need to back substitute to go from u to x to answer our question. So both of our u values will be replaced with 2x minus 1. Now is this our final answer? <laughs> I don't know. We do still have to check our work by taking the derivative. Let's see. Let's look at each term separately. We're going to use take the derivative of this. And the first step is to use the power rule um, for differentiation. So bring the 5 halves out in front and multiply it by that 1 tenth. Leave the inside 
function b, raise it to one less, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is two. Then I'll do the same process for the next term. So we'll bring the three halves out in front, multiply by the one sixth, leave our inside function alone, subtract one, so we did the power rule, then the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of the inside, plus c, its derivative goes away. So we will cancel, it looks like this two and this two can cancel of that term, and five over 10 is one half. So we'll have one half and then two x minus one to the three halves. Then in our next term, once again, the twos can cancel. Three over six is another one half. So we'll have one half, and in this case, two x minus one to the one half. Now this is a little complicated here because how do we get back to our original integrand, which looked like this up at the top, x times the square root of 2x minus 1. Well, the way that we got there is we factored this. So we're going to pull out the greatest common factor from both of these terms. Clearly, a 1 half is a part of it. But also, a 2x minus 1 to the 1 half is a part of it, because it's a part of both terms. Then, what remained in each term? Well, out of this term, what remained, what did we take out? We took out a 1 half and 2x minus 1 to the 1 halves. In order to get back to this original term, we have to multiply by 2x minus 1 to the 2 halves, or 2x minus 1 just to the first, using exponent rules. So what was left out of that term was just 2x minus 1 to the first power. Because if we multiplied this by this, we'd add the exponents. 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. Then in the next term, we, the greatest common factor was this term, so we have to multiply this by 1 to get back to our original term. So this minus 1 and this plus 1 go away, and we're left with just 2x here, which cancels with the 1 half. And we just have that x left over. So we have this x in here, so that can come out front. And then we'll have 2x minus 1 to the 1 half, which is the square root of 2x minus 1. Now that one was a bit crazier to check your work, um, but just know that you can always check your work to see. So this is our original integrand, which means that we found the antiderivative of it successfully. All right, another trig example. Here we have sine squared of 3x times the cosine of 3x dx. We're taking the integral of this. Now I do want you to be aware that this is the same thing as if we took the sine of 3x and this whole thing was being squared. So again, we just write uh, any trig function squared or cubed or to the fourth or anything like that. We write it after just the three letters of the trig function then alternatively, it is appropriate to also write it like this, so just FYI. Okay, let's see, just by rewriting it this way, it might be a little more clear about what u should be. Remember, u is usually the inside function. It's also helpful if the important parts of its derivative are also in the integrand. So if we let u be the sine of 3x, is its derivative there? Is the derivative of sine here? Yes, the derivative of sine is cosine. So let's test it out and see if u should be the sine of 3x. What would that make du? Well, using the chain rule, we would have the cosine of 3x, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, that's the chain rule, so times 3, and then of course dx. So we have the important parts of, of u's derivative here. When I say important parts, this 3 out front can easily be dealt with. We can just have a 1 3rd du to deal with it. When I say the important parts, I mean the trig function of cosine. Is that there? Yes. So originally when I was preparing this video, I made u the sine squared of 3x, but then its derivative did not pan out correctly. And I realized, oh yeah, I need to just make u the simplest thing I can, the sine of 3x, because its derivative is there. So once again, we're going to divide by that coefficient, and so we'll have 1 3rd du equal the cosine of 3x dx, because that's right here. I forgot that dx. That's right here. And then we have u squared. 
So everything is accounted for in terms of u. So now we can rewrite our integral in terms of u. So the sine of 3x being squared, that's u squared. Then the cosine of 3x dx gets replaced by 1 third du. The 1 third can go out in front, and we have the du. So again, this u substitution is just a super streamlined way to integrate a composite function like this. Um, we have the integral of u squared du. Using our power rule for integration, what we'll get is 1 third, still that 1 third out front, and then if we get a 1 third times u cubed plus c. So we'll have 1 ninth. Then back substitution, replacing u with what it equals, which is the sine of 3x. So it's the sine of 3x cubed, which can be written like that, and then plus c. Now this one's not as crazy, I don't think, so we can check our work by taking the derivative. Now before I do that, I'm actually going to rewrite our answer. So I'm just going to rewrite what we have here as 1 ninth and then sine of 3x and then that's cubed plus c. The reason I'm doing that is I think it's simpler, it's personally like simpler for me to view it in this way rather than having the cubed here. I don't know, it just, this gets me a little bit sometimes. So now I'm gonna take the derivative and we're going to be using the power rule. So we'll bring the three out front, so we'll have the three times that one ninth then using the power rule, we leave the inside function alone, so it's the sine of 3x, and then it's raised to the second. Then we have to use the chain rule. The chain rule means take the derivative of what's on the inside. Well, the derivative of the sine of 3x is the cosine of 3x, and then using the chain rule again, we have to multiply by the derivative of this inside function, which is 3x, so its derivative is 3. So that was, that was quite a bit there. So let's see what cancels. This 3 times this 3 is 9, and that cancels with the 1 ninth. So the 3, the 1 ninth, and the 3 multiply to 1. So we end up with our integrand, which is the sine squared of 3x, I'll go back to writing it that way, times the cosine of 3x, which is what was originally inside our integral. So that means we successfully found the antiderivative right here. Let's close out this video by seeing when we'd need to even use a u substitution. Let's take a look at this first one here. We have an inside function, u would be x squared plus one, and then the outside function for it is that it's being squared. Now the important thing is if we took a look at this u, and if we let u be x squared plus one, then du is there, the important parts of it, which is two x dx, meaning that this x is accounted for we just would have to divide by two. Let's take a look at this next one here. We could not use a u substitution here. If we let u be x squared plus one, then our du again would have to be two x dx, but we don't have an x anywhere. So we couldn't use u substitution. How would you evaluate this? Well, all you would do is multiply it out. You would square it. So we'd have x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. And then we could take the antiderivative of each one of those terms. Now, in an alternate way, could we have done this with this original problem? Yes. It's just this and then multiplied through by another x. So in this case, there's another way to solve this one. This one is really just this guy multiplied through by an x. So it's really x to the fifth plus 2x cubed plus x. So in this case, we could use a u substitution, or we could just multiply it out and use the power rule for integration on three separate terms. In this case, we could not use u substitution because whatever we let u equal, when we let u equal x squared plus 1, the important part of its derivative, then x value, is not present in the integrand. We'd have to simply just use kind of this old school technique, multiply it out, and use our power rule for integration. 
U substitution is just one of many techniques that we can use to take the integral of more complex functions.